All right, we're live. What's up, everybody? It is the one on SK MMA podcast. I'm your host, Nick Atkin. I've got my buddy Kyle Diamond in the house. Uh, good to see you again, Kyle. How's everything going? I've just realized that I haven't put my my handle in my username. It just says Nick, but that's fine. You all know where to find me. I'm at Nick Atkin one. You can find Kyle over at, at Kyle Diamond J O U. Kyle, what's going on? Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, uh, it's been a been a busy couple of weeks, um, as I'm sure it has for you as well. So yeah, good to good to catch up on here. Freshly back in Hong Kong from uh, eventful week in Bangkok, which we discussed on Monday's show. Today's a little bit different. We have got the hitman Liam Harrison coming on the show uh, in a few minutes, I believe. He is back in action, officially confirmed. He'll be fighting in June at 1 1 at Bangkok's Impact Arena. How happy to see Liam back, Kyle? Ah, oh, so happy. Um, I, I, you know, when we started to get the news that, you know, he was going to be back and that he was having fights on, I was just, just happy to, to see him back, obviously, after the, the injury and then the confusion with him coming back in January and it not happening. So, yeah, just glad that it's, you know, we're finally getting the ball rolling and we have a date and it's officially out there. Yeah, not just one date. I believe Liam has a prospective second date also booked, which is great. But I believe that second fight is against Sex Sand. So I don't know if Friday's result plays into that. Sex Sand suffered a shock defeat to uh, uh, Yutaro. So he was an incredible performance from him. You know, I, I don't know if you were watching, Carl, but that was uh, I was shocked. I was shocked to say the least. Yeah, me too. I thought like it was a really good performance as well. You know, like it wasn't. But, that but here he is. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I have uh, have Liam on the line. Here he is, the hitman, Hello. Liam Harrison. Right, How are we doing? We're good. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. All right, good to see you again, Liam. Uh, thanks for joining us. I'm going to put you in the middle. I don't know if you have any earphones though, because I'm getting feedback on on our. Is there any way you can slot in some headphones or something? Uh, right, I'm back in two minutes. I'll just double check. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I'm going any knocking around. Uh, give me two minutes. No, it actually sounds okay now, but if you have them, it helps. All right, thank you, sir. All right, we'll take Liam out briefly. Uh, all right, Kyle, back to you. Talking about uh, Sex Ants fight on Friday. Yeah. Were you shocked? Yeah, for sure. I thought it was a really, really good performance as well. Like, I, I thought that... Um, Maybe it'll be close, but, you know, I don't think anyone would have um, been expecting Sex Hand to lose. But the fight wasn't even that close in the end. Like, I was I was super surprised. And immediately when I was watching that fight, my thought was, oh, but what about what about the Liam fight? Like, that could be jeopardy for that now, which uh, if it means we miss out on that, I will be will be pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, well, I'm hopefully getting Leo, Liam's thoughts on it now when he's back with his headphones so uh you know i i I check with him here he is he's got his headphones crappy ones (laughs) yeah the the crappy ones are often the best ones they're they're reliable right can you hear me yeah perfect all right right is that better yeah Uh, much better yeah Well, well liam we were just we were just talking about basically let's get your thoughts on it sex sans shock defeat on friday uh, against Utara Sai, were, were you were you shocked to see how that fight unfolded? Do you know what that Japanese guy would would have been a nightmare to fight for everyone? He was doing horrible big side stamps on his knee, big horrible side kicks to his like oblique kicks or whatever they call. But they were right on his kneecap. I'd have been fuming if someone would try to do that to me because that they, they looked awful. But his movement, his shot selection was different. It'll be an hard, hard night for anyone, I think, on one championship, especially in the in the little gloves in the three round format. Sexton did look quite a lot out, quite a bit out of sorts, but he, I just don't think he could get to to terms with the move, the movement of the guy. His, his weird angles, his weird shot selection. He was flying all over the ring. He was doing them horrible side teeps to his knee. Yeah, uh, and all, also obviously, I've just seen Sexton and his family. They put up a video today, like a, an Instagram of obviously Eid Eid today and stuff. Was was he fasting? Was sex and fasting and still fought yeah. because he's a d- devout Muslim and I know he takes his faith really seriously and that. So I'm guessing, was he not even eating in the build-up to that? Because he, he didn't yeah. look himself at all. So I was going to say the same. Yeah, I think Sexan was was observing Ramadan, so I, d- I don't think he was at full 
sex Sexan level. So, uh, I, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't make the excuse. And and Sexan seems to be the type of guy, Liam, who would just take any fight, any time, any name they give him, right? Yeah, of course. And after the fight, I mean, he put some up on his Instagram. Oh, I lost to a, a very good competitor tonight. Like you said, no excuses, no excuses, no nothing like that. And I wouldn't expect him to ever ever make excuses. But yeah, that, that Japanese fight will be a handful for everyone, I think, of... If one told me I was fighting him and he's doing them sidekicks to me, I'm telling him to get fucked. No, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think so. No one's doing fly kicks on my kneecaps anymore. No chance. Well, I, I texted you after and I said, yeah, do you, do you think that fight with you and Sexan is still going to happen? Because I know you want that one down the road and, you know, win or lose, is that the fight you still desire the most? Uh, yeah, I think we're, we're pretty close to uh, getting that fight across the line, I think, now as well. So I think... Uh, yeah, I think that fight can still happen just because someone's lost. Because what we were eight, eight and all before that, just because someone loses one fight, it doesn't really make a difference, does it? So um, that's the, the 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 thing that makes fights. Styles make fights. I'm not going to run around the ring like that Japanese fighter did and try and fly kick his kneecaps and then try and keep away from him and then burst him with weird shots and put him off his game. I'll just stand in the middle with him and we'll just have a complete explosion, which is what the fans will want to see. And that's what both of us will give them. So styles make fights and that obviously that guy's style was just all wrong for Texan. And I think that guy's style will be all wrong for a lot of fighters because he, he were really unorthodox and really dangerous. But um, yeah, like I say, styles make fights and me and him will, would still put on one of the most entertaining fights a year, I think. Yeah, I, I did ask Chatri after the event what he thought of it, and he said, Father Time, I'm quoting him now, Father Time catches up with everybody, Sex out is 35, almost 400 fights. It was bound to happen at some time. Uh, I think his form was slower than usual. His speed was, uh, his bounce was pretty bad. At the same time, you've got to give it to Taro. But uh, yeah, and then he said, I asked him, would he, still want to do the Liam and sex and fight and he said yes of course and he said that you have told the team you you just want legends now and and sex and is still a legend and they still want to do that fight so this defeat doesn't really take away from it right no nah, of course so you can't have one he, he, he won eight before it for one, one championship one loss can't take away one the fact that he's a legend two what he's done throughout his career three that he's won eight fights on one championship previously um, like you say, one loss doesn't define you when you've got 201 wins on your record. So it's uh, yeah, it doesn't take away the fact that he's still a legend and the fact that me and him will have the styles that will go together to make a, a classic. And I did ask him, I don't want to make him sound bad. I feel that when I read it back, the, the quote's going to sound worse. But he said that you're more interested in fighting legends now than quote unquote tough guys like Nico or uh Haggerty. But I don't Why the fuck am I gonna fight Nico? I'm thirty eight <laughs> years old. He's twice my size, twelve years younger than me. What have I got to gain there? There's a lot of good fights out there. For, you know what? I'm not an idiot, that's why. And I don't know if some of the guys think I am just like a fucking a kamikaze guy who's just gonna get in there and fucking put me on health on the line. I've been out for fucking twenty months by the time I fight with a horrendous injury. It's not in my best interest to come back and start trying to fight guys like Nico, Haggerty, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is as well, after I come back, my body, I might listen to my body after this fight. If I get this fight on my belt and then I fight sex. And listen, I might come back. I might feel amazing. And I'll turn around and say, right, get me in the title mix. I might come back and I might have lost a step and I might think, you know what? This is probably the best road for me to go down now. Fight some of the older guys and stuff. Listen, if you think there's any fighter in this division who's going to be 38 years old, be out for 18 months because they've got the fucking kneecap snatched from smoothing half off Nongo, come back from that injury and go, yep, get me straight back in title contention. Do you know what I mean? I'm just listening to my body at the minute because I was close to retiring a, a few months ago and it's been a long, long road back to get myself back to this position that I'm in now. And it's, it's been an hard road back getting it here mentally and physically, just trying to get me sent back for my body to feel how it felt before because people don't pay money to watch me fight and watch some watered-down, shitty old version of itself. People want the hitman. They want knockout punches. They want horrible leg kicks. And if I can't give them that, why would I fucking go out there and say, right, get me Agate, get me Nico, and just embarrass myself? Do you know what I mean? I'm not about that. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm thinking I'll come back. I'll fight uh, Kitano. Maybe fight someone like Sex and another legend. See how I feel after that. I'm just going to take it one step at a time, one fight at a time. Not get above my station. I'm not going to not. I've 
I'm going to look to knock Kitano out. If I knock him out, well, when I knock him out, I'm not going to jump up mic and go, right, I'm back. You better get me a title fight. I'm going to take it slowly, one step at a time. I'm going to listen to my body because I'm 38. There's been so many fighters that I've seen have just fucking gone past a sell by, sell by date and got knocked out like that by people that a few years previous would never have beaten. Do you know what I mean? So I, I just want to go steady. I want to take it slow. And like I said, I might come back. I might knock Kitano out. I might knock Sexton out. I might then just say, you know what? I feel fucking good here. Get me back in the title mix and let's see what we can do. But on the other hand, I might come back and I think, oh, you know what? I've slowed down a bit here. Let me chase these legend fights. Um, and I don't think anyone will be able to argue either way. It's not like I've ever fucking ducked anyone in my me, in me career. I've fought everyone. I've fought the Anawats, the Sanchez, all the legends from this era. Um, I've fought all the best Europeans. I've smashed most, most of the best Europeans to pieces, like Zatu, Benui, all those guys. So, do you know what I mean? It's not like I've ever ducked anyone or I'm coming back going, yes, Chatry, get me some easy fights, please, because I can't be asked anymore. Fuck it. I just want some easy pay days. Obviously, I don't. Kitano's 12 years younger than me or something. Do you know what I mean? He's still going to be an hard fight. Sexan is not a fucking easy fight for anyone. He's, he's going to be horrendous to fight him if we just meet at middle and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So these are still hard fights for me. I think Chatry forgets sometimes that I'm 38 years old. And by the time that if I, do, I did get back in title contention, I'd be 39. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just trying to think sensibly here. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm going to throw it to my co-host Kyle in a minute. He's, uh, he's going to ask you about the Katano fight, but I just got to ask you first about Jonathan Haggerty. He went on Sky Sports News, and I, I saw you uh, you were watching that. You saw the clip, and he he was saying something like, "Oh, he should grow a pair of balls." Or, I, I don't even I didn't even see the original clip, but uh, I know it upset you. Uh, thanks for also coming on the show. I know you're like on Sky Sports News now, and you you still you still got time for the small. Guys, <laughs> it, but uh, what's your reaction to the Haggerty stuff on Sky? Well, the thing is, it's like everyone popped up. He just made himself look an idiot because everyone, because what I said, everyone just jumped on it and just said, listen, why is Haggerty calling out Harrison? Harrison's 38 years old. He's not four for 18 months. Liam doesn't need to prove himself, blah, blah, blah. And everyone jumped on it and everyone was agreeing with what I'm saying. Listen, I don't give a fuck if he's got any title belts. I don't care about fighting for titles. I realised a long time ago, they mean nothing to me. Yes, they might bring you some more money. But I don't fight for money. I don't need any money. All my money comes off my website and my coaching. Do you know what I mean? And I do very well off that. So I don't fight for money. I fight for enjoyment. and I don't fight for titles. So they don't mean shit to me. Do you know what I mean? So yes, he might have that belt. But at the end of the day, I've done everything that he's doing now five times over throughout my career. I've got 91 wins. I had eight world titles. I fought all the best ties. I knocked a lot of them out. I beat Anawak, Kulbin, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know what I mean? He hasn't done any of that stuff. He's still, he's still like only on, what, 30 plus fights. I've got 91 wins and 50, 51 knockouts or something. I've knocked out more elite fighters than he's had fights. So I, I wouldn't dream when I were 25, 26 or whatever I get is, I would not have dreamed of going around calling out someone who's 38 and in been in, injured for 18 months with a terrible injury. Because where's the where's the pride in that? Um, so it just makes himself look stupid, especially when everyone's calling for me to fight Sexan and hang it to fight Nico. But he will not dare say Nico's name. He's not mentioned him once. Every time Nico gets mentioned to him, he just shuts it down and says, "Oh, I want to take a different route. I want to do this." Yeah, fair enough, he's fighting Super Lek, but I think he'll probably think to himself, yeah, well, I'm a, a full-blown bantamweight now. I'll probably have a bit of a size advantage. But um, the thing is, as well, he must be very confident, saying, oh, yeah, me and Liam Harrison in England, because he must think that he's going to beat Super Lek and then beat Nico. And I'll tell you something, if he fucking does that, that's going to be the... Uh, I'll, I'll be shocked, you know what I mean? Because that'll be fucking huge. But yeah, I... I just don't see where the where his heads are. I wouldn't be calling out someone who's 38 and being injured. At least let me fucking get back and get in contention and get some wins under my belt and then start saying, look, you're fucking, you're back now, you're healthy, let's go. But yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's, he wants to do that. It, it, you know what? He makes, it, he makes it good viewing, doesn't it? It's a bit of back and forth. Gets it on Sky Sports. Everyone gets their eyes on it and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I don't think Nico's happy about it though. He's fucking absolutely <laughs> fuming. I was speaking to him yesterday. He's fuming yeah. him. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, It'd be interesting to see what Nico says about it all because I think yeah, I was speaking to Sky Sports early and they were asking for Nico's number, so I'll give him it. So <laughs> it should be funny when he gets on Sky Sports because he's got some choice words for Agate and all that. Well, it's good, right? That you guys are all getting the shine now on, on Sky Sports News. And as someone who grew up, yeah, it's just shit that I'm old as fuck, though. Sky. Now it's come all <laughs> yeah. around. Well, you know, I think it's great that I, I also I know that also you. 
you gave Haggerty his props when he was coming up and you were on Joe Rogan. You Mate, saying he's like, I have messages on my fucking phone of Haggerty messaging me all the time going, oh, help me get to 50,000 followers. Help me get to 100,000 followers. Oh, will you share this for me, please, to get me noticed? Blah, blah, blah. I've got all these messages, mate, of, and I always helped him out. I always shared it. Like you just said, I give him his props on Joe Rogan. I always fucking congratulate him when he wins. And then as soon as he gets up there, then he's just, that all goes out of window. And he forgets all that shit, you know what I mean? So, but it is what it is. What goes around comes around. I'm sure a fucking camera will catch up with him for his attitude at a minute. But yeah, it is what it is, mate. All right, well, you do have a fight booked for June. We want to talk about that. I'm going to throw it to Kyle to ask you about this fight. 1-167 one, one, in Bangkok. I don't know if you've met Kyle. Sorry, Liam. This is Kyle Diamond, also works at Sports Kino. Good lad. Nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, good to meet you, man. Uh, um, Kyle, the yeah, floor is yours. Go for it. Kazuki Katana. So the, I think the interesting thing, based off what we started with, with the sex and conversation, is, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, we've been talking about you fighting sex and for so long now. That, and so when you guys were announced as going different routes and then potentially coming together in a couple of months, that got people excited. And then sex and loses, like, with this opponent... <laughs> It's not that you would have underestimated him anyway, but after watching Saxan fight the other weekend and being impressed by that guy, I know I was impressed by him as well. And like you said, bit of a nightmare for a lot of guys, I think. But does it kind of put this one into into perspective of like, I, I think a lot of fans would get carried away going, Liam's going to come back, win this, and then we'll get to Saxan. It's like, we could maybe have to slow the brakes on that one a little bit because the Saxan fight, like you said, can happen, win or lose, regardless for either of you guys, I think. But this one comes first, you know? Of course, my, uh, my I've got tunnel vision on this fight. Um, we're working a solid game plan. I've, I've, I've had a good look at Kitano. He's on a six, seven fight win streak. Very good, very sharp, very fast. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have to be on the top of my game. I don't underestimate everyone, anyone. I, I train the, all the same for everyone. that It gets 100% and I'll be going in there and I'll, I fight hard every fight, no matter who's in, who I'm in there against. So, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting back in there. I, I'm not even bothered who it's against at this point, as long as it's not John Lineker, obviously, because I was sick of getting <laughs> off in fucking MMA fights when there's all these good Thai fighters out there who are sick of getting off in them fights. But, yeah, I, I, would, I, I got to the point where I'm not even bothered. I'm not bothered if he's, if he's 10, 12 years younger. He don't, that don't matter. I'm uh, He's going to be young, hungry. He's going to be looking to make a name for himself off me. I'm going to be looking to get in there and put a fucking blistering performance on and just say, look, I'm back like I've never been away. So, yeah, it's good. It should be, it should be a really exciting fight. He's got a lot to prove. I've got a lot of questions that need to be answered to everyone who's going to want to see what, what form I'm going to come back in. So yeah, I'm a tunnel vision mate. That's that's all it is at minute. You mentioned uh, the the John Lineker fight, I believe. Um, I, I was messaging your WhatsApp around that time. I believe you were in Canada at the time, so we didn't end up making an interview happen. But um, I feel like around that time was when you kind of started to speak a little bit more about like I'm not chasing Nico, I'm not chasing Haggerty. Like let me do my thing. They're doing their thing. Like when did that kind of become a thing? Because I feel like there was a period. Obviously, you've been out for a long time. It feels like there was a period where Haggerty, you know, was was winning those fights and became the champion with that win over Nongo and stuff. Where maybe it was, it was there was a bit of talk, all of the the tension between you guys. It was a bit more of like, oh, maybe it could happen. And then throughout, as the injury, you know, got postponed, the return and things like that. It felt like there was a little bit of a change in in focus for you of being like, I can't rush into anything. I can't get ahead of myself now. This of course, first. that's what we're, I would try to do. I try to fucking get me some backs. I wanted to fight so bad, but my knee just wasn't fixed properly. Um, and I was thinking, well, I'm never going to be able to get back to the level of sharpness and how dangerous I was before. So what's the point of me trying to fucking chase these fights when I can't fucking go into 100%? I'm feeling good again now. My body's starting to feel how it did before. I'm starting to pick that level of sharpness back. I'm sparring hard again two, three times a week. I was Before, I was sparring hard once a week, and then my knee was fucked for the rest of the week, and it ballooned up, and I'm thinking, I'm going to have to retire here. Um, because if I can't manage what's happening to my body, my body's like betraying me here. I thought, I'm not going to... I don't want to go into a fight without training. I'll, have, I've, I'll always train my own career throughout all my 20s, through all my mid, to, up until my mid-30s. I always trained harder than anyone in the gym. And I, if I can't go into a fight, no matter who it's against, knowing I've done that, I, I won't bother, do you know what I mean? 
Um, I'd rather just retire. So that's what I was starting to get in my head, thinking I'm going to have to fucking retire here. This is it. Now I'm back and I'm fucking back mixing it with all the young kids in our gym. We've got like really top level up and coming youngsters in our gym and I'm starting, I'm wiping the floor with them again like I was doing a few years ago. Everything's coming back. My timing's coming back. My power's never left. I actually feel like I'm hitting harder than I was before now because I've been working so much on different stuff while I was injured. I was working a lot on my explosivity and my, my strength and my power and stuff with my S&C coaches. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting getting in there and um, to putting all that back to the test in a, in a proper fight now and not back in the gym. So, like I say, it, it, it was tough. But like Mentally, going through that injury, it, it, it'd been so long and I was thinking just as I thought I was getting somewhere, then I'll drop him back down again and I'll ju I just had enough and I was thinking, fuck's sake, I'm just not getting anywhere. I was getting frustrated watching everyone going through these really big fights and having good fights and stuff like that and now I was, I was getting pissed off and I was thinking, you know what, what am I doing this for? And my head had just totally gone at that point. Obviously, then I went and got my knee fixed properly over in Costa Rica and I feel fucking great again now. So yeah, I'm uh, just looking forward to getting back in there. I, uh, you were there with uh, with Derek Lewis, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's fucking funny. Him, he's one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life, and I don't even think he means to be. He's he's just ridiculous. And you went to watch some some alligators and and monkeys. Yeah, we went to watch some alligators. We went to um, see some sloths in rainforests. Yeah, we had <laughs> had quite a good laugh actually. How how was the knee and the hand? I know you you had that lump on your hand as well, right? Yeah, yeah, both are good. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm back. I'm back in full training. There's nothing that, like before, what were happening is I were thinking I were in a fight camp for that. When I said I'd come back and fight Lineker, I'd spar hard one day, then the next day I'd be fucked. I'd have to have the day off, and then the day after that I'd have to like watch what I were doing in training and stuff, and I couldn't get a proper session in. So it was like one good day, two shit ones. You can't do a fight camp like that. And I'm, I'm now back in the position where I'm doing everything that I was doing before I went away. And I'm feeling good while I'm doing it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's every, my hand's good, my knee's good. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. All right, Kyle, you had one more. Sorry, I interrupted you. Then I'll, I'll uh, throw one more at Liam. I don't want to keep you too long, Liam. I know you've got a strength and conditioning class coming up as well. Yeah, no, it's fine. I've got another 15 minutes. It's all right. All right, Kyle, sorry. So rudely interrupted you there, sir. <laughs> That's okay. Because uh, I, I was going to change the subject anyway, so I didn't want to take it too far, you know, too quickly away from... Into Derek one, Lewis and alligators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Nick said about, you know, how you've always given Haggerty his props over the years. I saw that you put a tweet out the other day where you basically explained, you know, it was almost like a, a final statement. Like, look, if you need to know my opinion on anything regarding this, check this out. Here is everything broken down. And you said about, you know, you gave him props with the, the super light fight, if he does go and win that, you were like, I'll, I'll tip my hat to the guy if he goes and does that. Like, how do you see that fight going? Um, because, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be a big one. And I'm sure people are going to want to get your take. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> I'm back. Yeah. Um, back. Uh, yes. Any, anyone to beat super light at a minute. I don't see anyone beating him on the planet. I know Haggerty might have a bit of a size advantage, but I just don't see anyone beating him. I get his best two wins have been against Nongo and Sami, and both of those guys were like 36, 37 at the time. Superlek is the same age as I get it. He's banging his prime. No one's looked to like coming close to beating him. And, and it'll, do you know what I mean? It's, if he does, yeah, like I said, for cool. fair, fair play. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a, a massive ask for him. But like I say, you can't write I get it off. You can't write anyone off in them small gloves. But the thing is, even in them small gloves, Superlek has never come close to looking like he was going to get stopped. Uh, he had a bit of a shaky moment when Takaru did that horrible liver kick to him. Um, but his, his chin, is he, he, you can't deny how fucking solid his chin is. I don't think he's... I think he's ever he's been stopped once with a cut and that were it. So if Haggerty can pull up, pull that off, then yeah, like I say, fair play. Um, so yeah, that, that it's going to be such a good fight. That I'm, I am really looking forward to it because that there's going to be a bit of needle in there after the first fight they had where Superleg stopped him. <coughs> Me, um, but yeah, like if, if he can pull that one off, then yeah, fair fucks to the guy because that will be one of the biggest wins this year, without a doubt. All right. Well, there's some questions in the chat. I'll, I'll just throw to you quickly, Liam. Uh, this one from anonymous. Please give your thoughts on Iman Barlow's retirement and the circumstances surrounding it. Do you know what? That's a shame. It's a, I don't know what's going on. And like, 
I've, I've never had this problem. I've always been, I've always been offered fights and stuff like that. So I, I can't, I can't, I can only talk from my experience. My experience has been other than getting kept getting offered the John Lineker fight, which I said I don't want to fight an MMA fighter. Other than that, I've been getting offered good fights and stuff. So and I've got offered another good two good fights now. So from my experience, I've been all right. But obviously, there's a lot of fighters who are coming out recently. And like, is, is it Big Dash? Put is it that his name? Big Dash, Vitaly Big Dash. Vitaly Big Dash. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He put someone up the other day, and I'm thinking, oh fuck me. And I thought they'd want to look after him because he were a big name for them. And wasn't he a were he a champion? He was not he? He was middleweight MMA champion. Yeah, yeah. And then he put him up the other day. And then. Then someone else puts them up, and then Imam Barlow retired, and I thought, "Fucking hell, what's going actually going on here?" Um, but yeah, it's, it, 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 no matter what's happened, it's a shame because Imam's only 30, 31, so she's still had a few good years left in her yet. And if they weren't going to use her, I don't see why they couldn't have just released her and let her fight on other promotions if they if they had no plans for her. Um, because that's what she said. She said they won't release me, so I, she's just retired. So that's that's a shame because Imam was one of the the best fighters. That I've, that's ever come from the UK and whether the male or female she was definitely the best female and one of the best fighters all around so that's that's a shame um, and I thought I, at one point we would have gone to see her versus Miller for the title but yeah it's obviously not not meant to be it's a shame yeah I hope she can resolve that situation with one um, a lot of love for you in the chat Nong just saying Liam is so effing real F Haggerty <laughs> uh, <laughs> Connor says Prime Harrison would smash Haggerty to bits and make him like an amateur I know you feel the same way Liam right hell yeah I mean, the, the guy when I well, when I beat Anoa when I smashed Corbin and I was beating all ties and I was smashing all Europeans when I was I get his age I'd, 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 I'd obliterate him there's no two thoughts about that in my mind I right, ego kind uh, saying Liam, who do you think uh, who do you think can beat Kunsu Clerk uh, in traditional Muay Thai? I, I don't even know, mate. Because that what is he on now? Forty one fight win streak. That's outrageous. At eighteen years old as well. That is one of the the craziest fucking sh things I've ever heard. Um, I thought I thought Commando might have had a good chance as well because he's a beast, but he's just so slick, and he's it's like he's got an answer for everything. So I'm not actually sure at the minute. So unless some fucking someone fresh bounces on the scene and starts get doing similar to what Kunsuk Lex done on his rise. I, I'm not sure who can actually can actually sit with him. It's, I, I'm, you know I'm enjoying watching those fights again now, though, because it, for a while it like won and totally took over. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I enjoy watching one fights, but I miss those traditional five threes fights in the stadiums where there's going to be two top ties, really skillful, and you know it's, it's not just going to be a brawl. You're going to get two elite level fighters trying to play a game of chess and pick each other apart and you can see the strategies getting played out i love watching fights like that still so it was nice to see that come uh come back into circulation oh, what do you got five minutes liam and if you need to leave just go so. no no I've, i can stay till about 10 more minutes i'm fine all right well i want to ask you my usual obligatory question about leeds united i see guys yeah. <laughs> oh don't make we're, we're gonna days, throw right? it down the toilet at minute with this this season <laughs> doing my head in what is it? Your uh, two draws, one loss, one win, last four games. Yeah, but the thing is, as well, the teams around us keep fucking up. Like Leicester lost to Millwall last night, and that were our chance if we could have won. But there were two blatant handballs last night where we should have got a penalty. Um, they were they were absolutely scandalous as well, like blatant handballs. And although we didn't do ourselves any favors by we played a bit shit, we should have had two penalties. It were it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it's just frustrating when the teams around us lose. They start dropping the ball, and then we bottle it. And it's just the fucking same story all the time. It does my head in. I can feel you. Well, <laughs> yeah. If if you have some questions in the chat, get them in now. But yeah, Liam, you talked a little bit about maybe if these fights go well, you you may stick around. I know you were saying before to me that you you felt the, the you could see the sunset. You know, the retirement was in the 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 mirror, but like, do, do you feel like maybe you could hang around if it goes well? Yeah, if they go well, for sure. This was before, like, my, when I, I mentioned this to you, and uh, it was just how I was feeling at the time with my body. Um, I'm just going to listen to what my body tells me. Like I said, at the minute, I feel good. Inspiring. I'm fucking battering everyone again, like I was doing a couple of years ago. And that's what we're missing out. I like to, I go by my performance in the gym and what my body can do and, who I'm sparring with and we, we have like quite a lot of elite level fighters who come down and spar at our gym and I'm back to the stage now where I'm always I'm, I step ahead of them again so yeah if I can keep this going and then that I can bring that into the fight um, and I can 
get my next two fights won in in good style, yeah, I will 100% stick around. I'd be there'd be no point me coming back winning these next two fights like in, in devastating fashion and then going right, I'm yeah. off now. Fair enough, yeah, that'd be going out on, on wins and going out on the at the top. But if I can keep going a little bit longer and keep entertaining the fans a little bit a bit more and keep enjoying myself because that's what it's all about for me now. Like I said earlier, I'm not interested in belts. I'm not interested in in money or anything like that. Obviously, a few knockouts and a few bonuses, that will be nice, don't get me wrong. But it's not about that. It's about enjoying myself and the entertainment for the fans. And like I said before, I don't want to like give any I don't want to come if I come back and I feel like I'm I'm a step behind, no one wants to watch that. No one's paying to watch fighters who would a little bit past the prime. No one will be interested in watching me fight. And if no one's interested in watching me fight, why am I going to keep doing it? Because I'm not going to be enjoying myself if I'm not, if I can't think I'm not, if I'm not like what I was before, if that makes sense. So yeah, if I, as long as I come back and I feel good and I win in, in good fashion and I feel sharp and I enjoy myself and it's a show for the fans, which I will 100% try and make it for a show for the fans like I always do, then yeah, I, there's no reason why we can't. We can't ride this way for another year or two. Um, I hope my missus doesn't fucking hear this either because she'll be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're all settled in the new house as well. Yeah, just about, mate. Yeah, we've still got a little <laughs> bit of work to do on it. We just had some new windows and blinds fitted today. We've got to get his driveway done. Uh, so, yeah, nearly, nearly all, all done now. Well, I'm sure if, if it seems closer than ever to having a one championship show in, in the UK, so you wouldn't want to miss that, right? Yeah, that's what I mean. If, if we can, if that comes around soon, then yeah, I'm all over that shit. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but like, the longer that waits, the the more I'm crumbling away into fucking dust. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's uh, if, we, if that can happen within the next year, I'd, I would love to be on that. And then if it does happen within the next year, then maybe that could be my swan song and my farewell fight because that'd be amazing to do that in front of the the UK crowd. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm just going to listen to my body. I might get another two years out of myself. Yeah. I mean, like Nongo was starting to look on a bit of a downfall, but he turned things round and that Nongo who fought Kulub Dan, I love it when he fights like that. He didn't, he didn't like with Haggerty and Carrillo, he was just trying to blast them out of there with big, massive low kicks and stuff. And it backfired on him. The Nongo, the Kulub Dan, who, uh, Nongo would just be Kulub Dan then. He would fought technical, nice body kicks. His guard was tight. He wasn't making too many mistakes. He wasn't getting like just drawn into a war. He fought very technical and he turned the clock back. And Nongo is a similar age to me. So, do you know what I mean? It's not like we're going to get to a certain age and drop off. You've got to listen to your body and see how, how, how you're feeling and just go with what your body's telling you. Like, like say, Nongo just did it then. So, there's no reason why I don't think I can do it either. My fingers crossed. I think I know the answer to this one. Dark side asking, are you going to be in Denver? I think so. Uh, yes, sir. I will be in Denver. Um, the message made yesterday and said that fight's getting announced this week. So yeah, look oh, out for sweet. it. All right, Nong, Jess, Sing Liam, you interested in Nongo rematch? Uh, as long as my fucking knees all right, I'm <laughs> let me see how my knee goes in this one. Um, the thing is, I'm going to actually go to Nongo's gym and I'm going to train with him in Super Bowl. I was speaking to him about it the other week. So when I go to Thailand next, I am actually going there to train with him. Um, if my knee is absolutely well, my knee, I think I believe my knee is absolutely fine now uh, because I'm doing everything that we're doing before. I'm sparring hard. There's no problems with it so there would be no reason for me not to have a rematch with Nongo but whereas before where I was still having all these problems with my knee he'd have just kicked me in it again and it'd fucking snap clean it half again and be, that'd have been the end you would that would have been the last you ever saw me um but yeah uh, let's just see what happens I know Nongo is going to be looking to get his belt back he has openly said that's the route he wants to take um I've got Kitano and then another big fight after that let's see where we are after that and uh yeah I'm just looking forward to going to train with him and Super Bond those guys as well so that should be pretty fun yeah, all right. One more in the chat. Uh, Chester, Josh saying, how does how do you feel about fighting in the morning on the prime cards? Does it bother it's you? Shit. Or do you have a... It's <laughs> shit. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Who, who wants to get out of bed at 5 a.m. and then go and have a fight straight away? The, the, see, the only good thing about it is you don't have to... I know when you get all damn, you're anxious all day, you're on edge all day when you've got a fight. You can't really relax because your, your adrenaline's pumping all day long because you know what's coming. The thing is, with those cards, you get out of bed, you're still half tired. Next minute, your hands are wrapped and you're in fucking ring at nine in the morning. It's a, yeah, it's a weird one. And you have to like mix shit up with your, your body clock and your timing and your time to training and stuff like that. So at the minute, all my big sessions at the minute, they're, they're all getting done in the morning between 10 and 12. Um, so then that's how I'm just going to do my whole fight camp like that. I'm, I'm, I train 10 till 12 every morning. It's a big session, pads, sparring, clinch work. 
would do everything there and make sure like my heaviest sessions are in the morning. So I'm getting up. I, I get up at like 6 a.m. every morning anyway, walk the dog. So I've been up for a few hours and then have a big session, 10 till 12. So I'm just going to have to do that throughout the, the whole fight camp. All right. And uh, story of the fight says, no question, but thanks for making the secrets to power striking. That shit was sick. No, no worries. Um, <laughs> you shouldn't get that though. You should buy Liam Harrison training. There's more on there. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, yeah, mate, I don't, I don't want to keep you too long. I know you've got to, you've got to bounce. You're in fight camp, so uh, we'll, we'll leave it there with you. I appreciate your time. Always a really fun chat, and uh, hopefully Leeds can pull it together. And get over yeah, it I there. think we fucked it now, mate, but like, I, I think it's playoffs for us now because we, we just bottled it, and, I, and it was, but we'll see. But I'll, I'll catch up with you, I guess, in, in Bangkok in June. Yeah, uh, for, for sure, fight. mate. We'll have a beer after. Yes, uh, it's uh, Liam Harrison. The hitman is back. Bantamweight Muay Thai clash against Katsuki Kitano at the Impact Arena. Get your tickets, buy your pay per views wherever you can watch it. Don't miss it. Liam, thank you so much, sir. Anytime. See you later, fellas. Have a good one. See you, sir. All right. All right, Kyle, what do you make of that? Liam Harrison. What a what a dude. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, it's, it's still crazy to me. Like, uh, I was just scrolling through twitter uh when i woke up today and you know you see a post from sky sports that's got liam's face on it calling jonathan haggerty the the jake paul of my tie like it, it's <laughs> it's crazy to to see stuff like that still for me you know just on a regular twitter feed right not a one championship post not a sports keto post nothing like that so yeah i'm i'm happy that uh he's become a, a bit of a face of this uh this uk sky sports deal along with haggerty of course yeah, you feel like they should lean into that, right? And and use him as much. Like, I, I feel like Liam shouldn't retire because it's a boom period, I think, now for UK Muay Thai. Even if he's not fighting, yeah, the top guys. Like, Liam, if his body holds up, like he says, definitely get a couple more years. He could be a real ambassador uh, for Sky Sports and one championship, right? Yeah, I know that they do the, they have like their own podcast now. And I, I believe he's been on that at least once, maybe twice. So, um, you know, if they're going to have, you know, they, they, they kind of know their stuff when it comes to MMA and stuff on, you know, Sky Sports have not covered Mai Tai. So having somebody on there like Liam, who fans can connect with, and also, of course, a, a fountain of knowledge, I think would be incredibly beneficial. Like he really could be, even if he does retire, I think, you know, of course, it'd be great to have him fighting so that he can be one of the faces of that. I think he could be one of the faces. He could be the voice of, of Mai Tai on Sky Sports, which would be uh, pretty crazy to see. Yeah, I'd like to see Liam stick around in some capacity as well after he does retire. But I'm very happy he's coming back. It's been a tough road for him. Like he said, best part of two years out with this horrible knee injury. He's had to go and get multiple surgeries. Then he got some stem cell treatments in Costa Rica with Derek Lewis. Just happy to see him back. Uh, you know, good to see him. But anyway, let us know any comments, questions you have in the chat. I think we'll hang around for like 20 minutes or so keeping it to an hour tonight but uh yeah here's one from chester nick and carl who's dennis purich fighting next here anything i know he's saying and he's staying in thailand because he has a fight lined up well i don't know anything for sure but i spoke to him obviously after the fight and he called for rod tang even if it's kickboxing even if it's muay thai even if it's mixed rules four ounce gloves no gloves whatever would you like to see that fight, Kyle? I mean, of the options that are on the uh, that are on the table for for Rod Tang, like obviously, you know, we've we've spoken about it before. It seems pretty likely that it will be the Takeru fight in between those American cards in Japan, and potentially room for for one more before then. I don't know if one is gonna maybe take the risk on a on a Dennis Purich fight in between, like before the super uh, before the Takeru one rather, but. Um, you know, like I said, of all the options on the table, I think that, I mean, Dennis Purich made a pretty good argument for getting it. So there's definitely something there, but I, I think that it might be a little bit of a case of just the timing isn't going to fall into place for him. But I, I'd be, I'd be into seeing it if that was the next one. Yeah, well, as as Chester says here, Rod Tang sounds like he's on one six seven. I think they want a kickboxing fight, a tune up for the Rod uh, to Kerry fight. But I'm, I'm going to drop a little bit of news a bit later after the show. But, you know, Chattery told to me, I mean, if you've watched my interview, you know the news already. But Chattery said to me that I, I've 
I've got the story on Sports Kita, so go check it out, sportskeeda.com forward slash one championship. But they want Rod Tang on the Atlanta card in November, which is a pretty quick turnaround. I think six weeks, maybe less, from Tokyo and Takeru. So I think they're hoping it doesn't get smashed up too hard. And then you'd imagine, Kyle, they'll be giving him a, a fairly easy opponent if they are going to book that. But that is a dangerous fight to book, isn't it? You know, less than two months out from the show, if, if Rod Tank fights Takeru, you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I can't see. Yeah, like I said, I just think the timing isn't going to work out for him, unfortunately. Like, he did everything that he could to, to get that fight and I think build some interest. But um, yeah, maybe if Rob Tang didn't have big plans for the end of the year, then maybe he would get it. But with that Takeru fight, yeah, I don't see it, unfortunately. But, you know, we'll but see, I guess. You have, you have to have Rob Tang on one of these American cards because he's the undeniable face of, of one in America, I think. Yeah, I I, I agree. The, the the and if you're you're booking it and saying that okay, let's hope for the best and that he comes through against Takeru unscathed, I think that even if he even if he puts on a really good performance against Takeru, he's not going to come out of that fight unscathed. Like six weeks, regardless, is going to be tough. Even with a really good performance, he's not going to come out of that fight uh, totally ready to jump straight back in. But you know. Maybe maybe they could do like an Edgar Tabara's rematch or something. I'm sure he could do that on six weeks or something like that. <laughs> I think he'd do that on six hours. Um, <laughs> Dark side. Oh, you're going to be in Denver, Nick. Yes. I'll be there. Hit me up if you would like to have a beverage, uh, some kind of chat, food, whatever. I'm, I'm always around. Are you going to go, Kyle? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't think I can. I. I don't. I. I have no way of of funding the the travel. Um, it's a long if, way, if, and it's not cheap. Yeah. yeah. If I if I was if I was covering it, then I would be there in an instant. But uh, I think if I was going, I would pretty much just be going uh, off of my own back. Um, I could probably cover it for. Um, for violent money tv but that is self-funded so again i'd be paying for all of the expenses and stuff so it'd be a it'd be a tough one but i, I really wish i was that card looks fantastic from what we already have announced so well look you can have the the sofa if i have a hotel or yeah maybe i'll get it. two single beds we're not going to top and tail but you know <laughs> if you if you as a fellow sports key to uh, let's see it would be great to have you there uh this one's from jack it might have been for Liam, but Liam's gone now. But he's saying, "What? When do you think we'll see a one show in the UK? And could they sell out somewhere like the O2? What do you think, Carl? As to when, I, I'm I'm optimistic of it being next year with the Sky Sports thing. With you know, especially if you know Haggerty in a big fight, you know, could could that bring that there? I think I think maybe. I find it really difficult to gauge. Um, the presence that one has over here in terms of announcing a venue like whilst of course they have some some big names and if you were able to get kind of like they did with the first denver card if you're able to put some of those big names on there that that do tend to have a bit more of a, a global appeal like there are going to be a bunch of people in the uk that are going to see rod tang on a poster and know who that is and stuff like that um as for you know a first event i've seen so many MMA promotions come over and not do great and it takes time because you know tickets are expensive and there there is a lot of combat sports like going on in the UK with boxing and MMA so it's a bit of a tough sell so I feel like it would be interesting I think the O2 would be a big jump to do first personally we'll see I know fans do travel in the UK though yeah, and come I, down from the north and all that. <laughs> even just Europe, right? Like, when was the last? Like, there's the if they were able to get a bunch of big names on that card, fans will travel from from Europe to watch those guys as well. I think that's where you want a Liam Harrison on the card, and if you if you put him against Haggerty in a main event, and if if the stars align somehow, I think that sells out. But we have to see. All right, Rod Tang versus. 
period in kickboxing since Chatri said Rotang kickboxing fight on one 167 asked Connor. Yes, I think that's maybe what happened. And it wouldn't be the first time, I'll tell you this, that you know, match matchmakers have maybe taken an idea or two from from yours truly or the podcast and run with it. You know, I still do take some credit for Rod Tang against Demetrius Johnson. And obviously Purich did call out Rod Tang in the ring, but he, he did have a very fiery interview with me backstage. We should go check out the interview guys on Sports Keto after the show, of course. So who knows? I hope they make that fight. I think they could do a lot worse. I'd I'd rather see Rod Tang against someone with a bit of momentum coming off a win than Rod Tang just getting a complete guy a guy we haven't seen for a while or someone we've never heard of or who's just there to get beaten up. Dennis Pirich will bring his A game. He will talk people into the arena. He will talk a big fight on social media. I think that sounds like a good idea. Yes, there's no way Rod Tang's not banged up from Takara agreed, Connor. Bringing a t-shirt for you, Nick. Says story to fight. Please do, please do. Is it a t-shirt or a shirt? I want to. You know what kind of shirts I like? Very loud, colorful ones. I'll be getting a few more myself. If you guys want to split and get a a sick Airbnb, I'm down. Yeah, I'm not sure I can afford the fighter hotel. Last time I stayed in the fighter hotel on my own dime, it was it was pretty pricey. It was in ski season as well in Denver, so not cheap. Connor planning on going to Atlanta. I will see you there as well. Uh, I'd rather see Rod Tang fight to care in Japan than fight Atlanta, given the options. I would like to see Rod Tang fight to care in Japan. And yes, if, if, if Rod Tang comes away unscathed, I think try and book him on short notice against someone, anyone in Atlanta, just to get that buzz. Uh, who's not called out Rod Tang in the past year or so, says John. I think everyone has, yeah. It's... But he, he's not fighting any of the people calling him out. He, he's calling people out and getting those fights, you know. So I would love to see Rod Tang defend his Muay Thai title. It's been nearly two years. I know he was meant to defend it against Superlek and then Superlek missed weight, yada, yada. But he's got a list of guys just sitting there. You know, Dennis Purich is probably now number two ranked because he beat Jacob Smith, who was number two. There are other guys in line. You know, if we're going to make these rankings a real thing, it's, yeah, Dead Wang Lek is there. Mahmoudi. Walter Gonzalez. So I, I don't know if that fight will ever happen. But if you have challenges in rankings, yeah, let's let's do that. But anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll have about 10 minutes. Um, if you have any other questions to get to, I'm trying to think of other news, Kyle, that dropped in the last couple of days because we, we did cover all the news on Monday. But what was your overall opinion on the weekend's shows? Did you enjoy them? I think pretty similarly to to you from from the the podcast that you did on Monday. Uh, I was a little bit maybe slightly underwhelmed by the Friday fights card. I did have high hopes for that, though. So not that it was a bad card. I just maybe didn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. And 21 massively exceeded my expectations. I thought that card was like, okay, not as bad as some of the fight night cards that we've had in the past, and definitely not one of the better ones either. And I ended up having a lot of fun with that card. Like the... The, all the the performance bonus winners, the the Rutolos and Ben, I thought uh, were great on that night. And then obviously you get a big upset in the main event as well, which really helps to make that card stand out. Um, and, you know, if if Regian had just secured a unanimous decision win after five rounds, maybe I'm not looking at that card as favorably. The fact that you get that upset means there's a bit more of a a lot more to talk about afterwards. So that that made it more interesting as well. So yeah, I, I, that card really really surprised me. I had a lot of fun with that card. Agreed. I loved it, actually. Totally, totally accurate. Yeah, as Connor says, I think Rod Tang being on that card in June against Dennis is going to help sell that arena out, right, Kyle? Because it's in the morning. It's going to be a tough. you got 12,000 seats. you got Stamp on it. you got Taiwan Chai on it. But they're going to need everything they can get to draw fans into the arena and Anytime Rod Tang's on the bill, I think people are going to pay to watch or they're going to buy tickets, right? Yeah, it feels like that's the the ace up the sleeve, right, to sell 
tickets for that card. It's interesting how many you know fights we've had lately where the people are booked for another fight already. Like you've got this whole Rob Tank scenario where we're saying what quality of opponent is he actually going to get because they don't want him to be too injured to fight Sekiru and they don't want him to be too injured to then fight in America afterwards. And then we've got Stamp on that card as well, who also is fighting in America. And then Liam, obviously, as we just spoke to. So, um, you know, I, I hope that it all works out and that all of these fighters come through these camps and, and fights unscathed in order to make these big dates because uh, it'd be strange if we have these two American shows and say Stamp isn't able to make it or Rod Tang isn't able to make it, you know? Yes, can you imagine... One one sixty seven Impact Arena. Denise Zambuanga slaps on an armbar, breaks Stamp Fairtex's arm. She's out of Denver. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be tough. That'd to be tough. Don't want this to happen. I don't like double booking. I really don't. Mm. I think if you want Stamp in Denver, you just say right, Stamp. You're on Denver. We're taking you off that June card. You don't leave anything to circumstance because this, especially one championship, we've seen how many times they've been burned by people getting injured, dropping out, you know, main events getting scrapped. You know, we saw they had a lot of bad luck late last year. I remember, you know, Haggerty and Andrade, Tawancha Super Bowl got put back twice. It happens. So fingers crossed for them, it all comes through. Am I the only person? Ask John who wants sex and versus Solinu. Um, I've you know I've seen I've seen yeah a couple of good performances from so on on Friday fights. Um, I don't know that that could be. It depends what they want to do with sex and right, Carl. Do they, I the reason I thought they didn't want to match sex and Liam for so long is because I thought they were worried if Liam beats sex and then Liam bounces off into retirement, that takes away sex and's kind of star power and sex and's still got a fight on Friday fights, but now he's lost one. You know, do you now position Sexton as that veteran to kind of test people against that you want to build a name off of him? Or or do you still want Sexton to be beating up guys like he was doing all of last year to much success and 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 getting the crowd happy? How would you book Sexton going forward? I feel like we've kind of had... Um... It, when you when you would look at you know when he was potentially going to retire and then he signs with one the two things that I would want would be him to go up against a bunch of uh, fellow legends and veterans of the sport and then maybe see him you know try and put a, a winning run together. He's done the winning run last year. We had that incredible like Indian summer in his career, and then the Harrison fight. I you know we wanted for ages and it wasn't getting made and stuff. And I feel like we have the opportunity now. You know maybe now that the win streak isn't there to, to tick off that other box and, and put him in there with some some guys that people just want to see some fun fights. I, you know, we saw him go on that incredible win streak. And now I feel like the only other thing to cap off this kind of late run would be to see some of those those fights that people just really want to see now. Like, I don't think we need to continue with having him fight constantly but uh you know, if that's what he wants to do, fair enough. But I would personally rather just see him in some fun fights that people want to see, like the Liam one. All right. Anonymous says they'll find an American with a pulse for Rod Tang to ragdoll. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure they'll find someone, you know, Rod Tang could beat easily. If, if he comes through unscathed against the carrier and they want to sneak him onto that Atlanta card, some WBC champ or something. Shots fired at Edgar Tabaras again. It was funny, Kyle, when... <laughs> I put that interview up with Dennis. I put a clip of it on Sports Keener, Instagram and my Instagram, and then Dennis was trashing poor Edgar Tabaras, calling him the biggest bum in the league. And uh, Edgar commented, he said, watch your mouth through the angry emoji. Uh, I do love Edgar. He's a good guy. Uh, give my man Edgar a fight at straw weight, please. Stop this flyweight nonsense. I think Edgar Tabaris can still do something in one. I don't want to see him against gigantic guys just smashing him or guys who miss weight massively like Jojo Ghazali. Give Edgar a fair fight. Come on, one championship. All right. One should snap up. Bellator talent says Al C. Hey, Al, how are you doing? I don't think Bellator have rankings anymore, which might indicate a bunch of fighters being released. Why not? It depends if they want to build their MMA 
divisions, my gut says they're not going to be snapping up talent who are on big money contracts. We're seeing what's happening to one's MMA talent. They're kind of being quietly frozen or let go when their contracts expire. I think one's moving in a different direction with their MMA. They're kind of going in the direction of the Muay Thai. They're getting guys uh, who are younger, uh, prospects with good records on cheaper deals, trying to build new divisions. That's just my gut. I don't think they'll be making any star signings of MMA anytime soon, but we'll see. Anonymous asks, who is Anissa Mexen fighting? I don't think she's fighting anyone, Anonymous. Don't, I mean, she's not got anything booked. I don't know what her status is with one. I hope she sticks around. You'd like to see her back, Kyle? I mean, I'd like to see her back. Uh, I, I, I mean, apparently some news of some sort coming soon, so that's positive. Um, oh, really? Oh, so this is sparked by uh, her saying she's coming back, or was it just a random question? Yeah, just on... Uh, I, I've, I've literally just read it in the comments um, oh, okay. that she had posted something on Instagram, um, oh, so, which I didn't see. Her. That's why I don't see it. Yeah, she blocked me on Instagram. So, oh, well, to fill me in. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't seen it either. Literally, just a comment in here. Um, so okay. that, otherwise, I would have said I would like to see her back, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but if, if but she has posted is. something, <laughs> then, then then maybe, I guess. Oh, good. But I, well, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't Even have if expected she got me. I still love her. She's great. Yeah. So I'd like to see her back. I think she's got plenty of fights left. It's a shame she didn't get that Janet Todd fight before Pet Gija. Um, I don't know. If she she got Pet Gija, you know. Yeah, but I, I think I think they should have had Mexican fight Janet and then Mexican fight Pet Gija. I still think Pet Gija would have beat Mexican, but I think Mexican deserved to get that fight with Janet Todd a few couple of years ago, and then. I love Janet, but yeah, I, I would have maybe favoured Mexican in that fight. It's a shame, but I hope she can still bounce back. Anyway, back to the chat. Uh, double booking's not great, says so story of the fight, because they they might get injured and miss the second fight. But also, it's a tad disrespectful to the first opponent. Agreed. Uh, anonymous. Yeah, Mexican said, fight news coming soon. Okay, there we go. Speculate in the chat. Who do you think Mexican's going to fight? we got about four or five minutes left here before we bounce. Let's be honest, says John. Married Rod Tang is not the same fighter he was before. I don't know. He's only had one fight or two fights since he's been married. He destroyed. He's a lot richer since he got married. I'll tell you that. He's making 300,000 US dollars a fight now. But... I, I don't. Do you see any difference in Rod Tank Kyle? Because as far as I know, he, he's always never trained super hard. I don't see much change in him in the ring. You know, he's still the same Rod Tank from what I've seen. Yeah, I, I, I think that if there was, you know, maybe any, I, I think that maybe there was a conversation to be had there, but I thought, you know, the real test for him was Superlek, and I didn't think he looked unlike the Rod Tang of the past against Superlek. I just thought it was it was a very close fight, and I thought Superlek fought incredibly well as well. So, yeah, I don't know. It's tough, right, because if you're not seeing him constantly tested against uh, the best competition that's out there for him, then maybe it's hard to tell whether he slipped. But judging from the Superlek fight, I would say probably not. If he's motivated, then I would say he can still bring that out of him. I do not see the fire he once had, says John. I guess money changes people. I think Rod Tang, I don't know. He, he just seems to me, he seems so unmotivated sometimes when you see him going into a fight. I, I thought he might lose to Tabaras. That's how much he didn't seem like he cared going into that fight. He, we were on the same plane. We both touched down in Denver on Monday, four or five days before the flight. The fight, sorry. He hadn't acclimatized to the altitude he didn't give a damn, it seemed, but he still just went and destroyed the guy. So I think he knew he was going to win. He always seems to, like he doesn't care that much, but he, he he's very confident in his abilities. And there's a very good interview with him and Antoine Pinto on YouTube to check out. I think after, before the Super League fight, after Tobias, where he kind of explains that whole vibe. 
I think that's just Rod saying, we'll see if it costs him. Anyway, why did why did she block you, Anissa Maxson? Um, I just reported what happened, <laughs> I think, between her and Stamp and everything back in January, February last year when she pulled out of that mixed rules fight with Stamp. And I put it on uh, Instagram and everything. I was just trying to do my job, and I, I don't think she liked it because, yeah, it's a shame because I do really like Anissa and I like Benoit her husband and coach and i i interviewed them a couple times in phuket in person i you know at great expense slept across halfway across phuket to interview them and i pushed really hard for them to get the janet todd fight and i never felt it was unfair in what i reported just what i knew to be true i don't think i painted her in a bad light but yeah, I don't think she liked what I said, and that's fair enough. We don't we don't all have to be friends, but I'm a big fan of Anissa. I love her talent. I think she's great, and I want to see her fight in one championship. Hopefully, she is back soon. Right. Even my wife said, "What's wrong with Rod Tang? Is he hurt?" Says John. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he has lost the fire, Kyle. We'll see. It sounds like though it's going to be a busy six months or so for rod tang from june to november three fights it looks like kickboxing tune up in june to keru in september and then atlanta in november if he is still unscathed but we're gonna leave it there i think because it's 10 o'clock here just an hour today hour and a half on monday hours on wednesday unless loads of news to talk about so kyle over to you. Final remarks. What's coming up? What do you got? Um, this is quite a quiet uh, week from me, to be honest. Well, it isn't. I'm super busy with writing work for UFC 300 this Saturday night, but um, that's been kind of taking up all my time. And obviously, without a one card this week, I haven't really been putting out a whole lot in terms of my own channel or or other things it's been pretty much just standard uh writing work standard weekly grind this week so uh nothing nothing too nothing too big to shout out really well you've got those liam harrison quotes i expect you to write a few dazzling articles now on sportskeeda.com i did write one today about the the jake paul comment so oh yeah well now you've got some fresh stuff straight from the horse's mouth exactly is that the first time you spoke to liam yeah i was supposed to interview him in the build-up to the lineker fight and we weren't able to get like a time sorted because he was in canada at the time i don't know if he was doing i think he was doing a seminar tour or something and uh and then obviously what happened with the lineker fight happened i saw the post of him and Derek lewis and thought i won't bother pestering him anymore we'll just leave that be and uh i'll catch up with him at another point so uh yeah hopefully i'll uh I'll grab a chat with him before he fights and uh yeah i don't know what that where that will be or whatever but i'll let people know if that happens when it happens all right go follow kyle the handle is there everyone uh thanks for watching and commenting everything yeah it's, it's fun to do a second show and we'll be back on monday hopefully yeah, Mondays and Wednesdays, that's the plan going forward. Uh, Mondays with Tristan, Wednesdays with Kyle, he's happy to keep doing them. Try and line up some guests. I, I have a couple of guests already in mind for next week, so we'll mix it up a little bit. Hope you all enjoyed it, and stay safe. Enjoy the rest of the week. Enjoy Friday fights. We'll see you on Monday. Thank you, everyone, and uh, good night or good morning.